Hello everyone and welcome. Today is the day I finally put the finishing touches on this seriously scale radio controlled 1965 Shelby GT350. In this series I've showcased the entire build process in detail, from wiring up some tiny RC electronics, to modifying this 124 scale plastic model kit to fit the functional drivetrain. Today though, all I need to do is get this GT350 body painted and this car will be complete. If you'd like to catch up on this build series, I have included a link to the playlist for this project below in the description so you can check out the prior videos I've made. Let's go ahead and dive right in and get this GT350 finished up. Before I begin painting the body, I first want to remove any imperfections that might be present from the manufacturing process, such as mold lines or flash. Fortunately, this is a very well molded and highly detailed body, so not much work is required to get it to look its best. I'll also sand the entire outer surface of the body with some 800 grit sandpaper to help with paint adhesion. I did notice a few emblems on the fenders that don't seem to be present on the real cars, so I removed them with a knife and some sanding. I deepened all of the panel gaps to make them a little more visible. With the body looking good, I started gluing on some of the additional parts, starting with the rear quarter window vents. I also test fit all of the chrome parts, including the bumpers and grill. This kit includes reverse lights and the holes for them to fit into on the rear valence panel. However, it seems most of the real 65 GT350s, if not all, didn't have the reverse lights, so I just filled in the holes. I have no idea if they were optional on the GT350 like they were on the regular Mustangs, but I'll just build mine without them present. Now the hood doesn't really want to stay closed all the way, and I can't just glue it in place since I need a way to easily access the battery, so I'll use some magnets and a scrap piece of styrene to keep the hood securely closed while driving, but still make the engine compartment accessible when needed. I test fit some of the final parts including the windows and lights, making sure they fit into place without any issues. Thankfully, despite this being a decades old kit design, everything fits together quite well. I thoroughly washed the body before masking the outside so I could paint the inner part flat black. I figured it would look better to have the underside of the body painted black to match the interior and chassis. After that paint had dried, I masked off the inner part of the body, and like on the real 65 GT350s, I painted mine white. The paint turned out looking nice. I ended up doing a bit of color sanding in a few spots. I wasn't really concerned if there were any imperfections or I sanded a bit too deep in some spots as I thought a few subtle imperfections or some slightly worn paint might look kind of cool on a car of this vintage. That's one of the things I like about building older cars is you can kind of get away with certain imperfections without them looking too out of place. I did experiment a bit with adding a black wash, which is just a very thin down black acrylic paint used to help accentuate the panel gaps and cowl vents. It ended up looking pretty good overall. I also added some detail with a chrome pen. It's time to apply the water slide decals, and I didn't have high hopes for these decals being usable since 
This is a 1985 issue of this kit and it had clearly been exposed to some high humidity, but they not only are usable, but really not too bad. I was ready to scan this decal sheet digitally and print out my own copy onto some white water slide paper, but that wasn't necessary. That's just how it goes sometimes with model building. You can have relatively recent releases like that Knight Rider Trans Am I built with awful water slides. Then you can have a kit going on 40 years old that has perfectly usable decals. Now age may have had some effect on the adhesion and not made them the best to work with as my decals here are certainly not perfect, but overall they look pretty good. To help protect those decals and the other details that I added, I applied the clear coat over top. While the clear coat dried, I applied some detail to the chrome parts using black paint and a red Sharpie marker. I also used a chrome pen to patch up the exposed plastic on the bumpers where they were previously attached to the parts tree. After that, I added some detail to the gas cap, front turn signals, and rear view mirror. At this point, the clear coat had dried so I could do the final assembly starting by getting the windows put in. I did my best to be careful not to smudge any glue on the windows, and it's always nice when the windows fit very well, which isn't always the case on many of these older model kits, but this one goes together great. After that, I got all of the parts that go on the rear glued on. No license plate holders are included with this kit, Instead, the instructions simply tell you to cut out the plates, which are found on the water slide paper, and just glue them onto the body. I believe that's pretty common on these older kits, and it looks just fine doing it that way. Next, I glued on the side view mirror, which looks like I maybe placed it a little too far forward, but that's kind of how they look on the real car. And finally, I glued all of the parts that go on the front into place. After removing the tape that was holding the windows into place, I can squeeze the body onto the chassis. And with that done, the car is now complete. What an awesome build. A bit of an experiment with some electronics that I hadn't used before, and the extra challenge of incorporating this model kit's chassis piece, but it all came together well, and I love the scale realism of this car. The front suspension does need slightly more spring, as it's resting a bit too low, but for now I'm just going to enjoy the finished car, and in the future I'll tune that suspension to get the front sitting a little higher. The car drives great. It's very smooth, tracks straight, certainly not very fast though, just a cruiser. All this car needs is a little suspension tuning. Well, I hope you all enjoyed watching this build half as much as I enjoyed making it. If you're interested in doing a similar project, all the STL files and more detailed information can be found on our Patreon page, which is linked below in the description. 
Also, I recommend that you go back and watch the build from the beginning by checking out the playlist linked below as well. That's going to be all for today's video though. As always, thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you next time.